Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. Uh, we want to thank God this morning for giving us this opportunity to come together. Um, you know, at the beginning of the cosmos, uh, God breathed out order out of empty chaos. He is God the creator, he is God who brings wisdom, he is God who has got the word. And he commands everything and it happens according to what he wants. And uh, even at the beginning of the church, again, we see that sometimes the church was a bit fearful, but God breathed courage into fearful hearts at the beginning of this service as well. You breathe into all that is said and done. And we believe in the God who is the creator, who is the giver of wisdom, who is the giver of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your wisdom is present in the ordering of the universe. From unseen quark to pause in quasar, from distant galaxies to ever multiplying gene, your wisdom is present in the wand of the world. From the still strength of the mountains to the powerful depth of the oceans, from the untamable wind to the barren beauty of the wilderness. Your wisdom is present in the miracle of life. Your wisdom is there, Father. Your wisdom is present in your word. From earthly garden to heavenly city, from creation to redemption, your wisdom is present in your Son. From birth to death, from death to life, from then until now and forevermore, be present in our worship. Lord of wisdom, we thank you for your Son, who is the wisdom we should seek. In your name I pray. Amen. I would ask you, Brother Ben, to come and do the reading from um, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 to 36. Thank you. Praise God. And I uh, yeah, hope you're all well this week. Uh, lovely day here in Atherton today. Uh, as Johnson mentioned, I'll be reading from Bob Proverbs, which is uh, very focused on wisdom. Uh, we're just talking that there's 31 books in Proverbs and 31 days in a month, and it's a good challenge to read Proverbs every day, one a day for every month, and sometimes you might have to read, read more than one a day, but it's a good little uh, habit to get into, and I'm going to take up the challenge as well, so looking forward to it. As uh, as he mentioned, wisdom, uh, Proverbs chapter 8 and the whole, whole chapter. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? At the highest point along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Besides the gate leading into the city, at the entrance she cries aloud, To you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behaviour and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgement are mine. I have insight I have power. By me, kings reign, and rulers issue decrees that are just. By me, princes govern, and nobles, all who rule on earth. 
I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With, with me are riches and honour, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and make me their tre tre and making their treasuries full. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ago at the very beginning when the world became, uh, came to me. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any of the dust on the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed secure, securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its bounty so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world, and delighting in mankind. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessings are those, blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me, find life and receive favour from the Lord. But those who fail to find me, harm themselves. All who hate me, love death. Praise God, this is the word of the Lord for this week and it's uh, going to be great to hear Johnston speak on uh, Proverbs 8. So we'll get him back to find out exactly what it is and bring open ears. Uh, <clears throat> this text we have just uh, read, the text from Proverbs 8 is attributed to Solomon. The people are in need of wisdom, and wisdom in search of people who will practice its virtues and extol for ever in higher principles of courage, justice, righteousness, and truth. The absence of wisdom is folly, is foolishness. The beginning of wisdom is the fear and the respect of God. And hence I've come up with the theme, when wisdom cries out, my theme today is when wisdom cries out. Where then is wisdom? Where then is knowledge of God? When then are people who embody and espouse its higher values? And who are the sacred keepers of the Holy Bible? Will anyone hear? Does anyone understand the need for knowledge and truth anymore? We have the values and principles which ensured and consolidated our strength as a nation, as a church and people withered on the vines of depravity and indifference. Even wisdom itself cries out in utter consternation. Wisdom is depicted as being the first thing God created. He said when God created everything, wisdom was there as essential characteristics for every man or woman if they are going to experience and enjoy in living. The writer of Proverbs expresses this very clearly when he wrote, Yep is the man who listens to me, wisdom, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For he who finds me, finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Proverbs 8, 34 and 35. The secret of effective living is to discover the truth about Jesus Christ. When we focus on him, we have discovered that truth is a caring love. Truth is the word becoming flesh. Truth is experiencing his life-giving power. 
Truth is discovering his love with arms outstretched to embrace us. When we are grasped with truth, we have discovered the secret of effective living. Where do we get it from? Where is this? In reading this passage, we might say that men of the same problems, men have the same problems and distractions facing the people of Israel and ancient societies still plague us today. The things which were experienced by the Israelites at the beginning or right from the beginning of creation up to today, they are still haunting us today. Wisdom is crying out more than ever before. Crying out for our souls who will seek, embody and practice the precepts that the people will retain to a true knowledge of God and love of God. Then people of God in the larger society shall realize righteousness, wholeness, peace. Where then do we see it crying out? Where do we see wisdom crying out? Wisdom is crying out for peace in the streets of this land. Fear stalks to terrorize and imprisons us. Some communities and neighbors are under siege because of fear. Gone are the days when you could leave your house unlocked and go on to the corner store to return and find everything intact. Gone are the days because we are afraid. Gone are the days when you would look, take a, 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 a leisurely stroll without worrying about someone knocking you, you over the head. In this day of drive by shootings, explosions and implosions in buildings and airplanes, where we are seeing everything happening, it could be in Ukraine, it could be in Russia, it could be anywhere in the world, where innocent people die painful and senseless death. In these times of gun torture and street mercenaries who take the lives of people over a dollar and some change, wisdom is crying out for sanity and light. Wisdom is crying out, is calling people. Wisdom is crying out for peace and the cessation of oneself. Unmitigated violence in the street. One man still grieves the loss of his father who on one of his daily strolls in a community was confronted by several boys, beaten to death with a tire iron because he had no money with which they could buy just crack cocaine, cocaine, just buy drugs. An elder woman who had been missing several days was found dead in her home. Her throat was slit and her man missing. Three teenagers were later caught and charged with murder. They were 13, 15, and 16 years old. Wisdom cries out the law and order. Wisdom cries out for sanity and the demonic and the insane forces of the society. Wisdom is calling out. Wisdom cries out for a reverence of life and amid discaralizing and discrediting forces of evil in the land. Our streets are filled with litanies of pain and grief. Wisdom cries out for peace and the eradication of senseless, demented violence in the street of the land. If you want to put it in the street of the world, wisdom is crying out for love in the families of this land. The term family values have received much ridicule. But the truth is, nothing is needed more today than the practice of those whose beliefs, values which make strong, viable families. They've been destroyed. No more of that. The disintegration of every society in some form or another can be as ascribed to the dissolution of the family. As the primary social unit, the family provides cohesion, stability, and training for its members. And now it has been destroyed. Many people recall the days when families sat around the radio or the TV, sat, shared nightly meals together, discussed family business together. Parents monitored the television viewing of their children, partly because there was only one set and also because programs contained not nearly the violence we see today. Things have changed. There seemed to be a sense of togetherness when families looked out for their other families, where serious family discussions occurred about matters of ultimate and serious concern, where we are able to talk as families, Opportunities for sharing created occasions for dialogue. 
learning and the reinforcement of positive values among family members. Today, many homes have a television set in every room. And family meals are seldom. Each one takes his food and eats in their own rooms. Parents don't take time to talk with their children, to educate and also be educated by them. Parents appear oblivious to what is troubling their children. Wisdom cries out for genuine dialogue and quality time as families are like ships passing in the night. We have no time for each other these days. If you look for everyone, they are on their gadgets. They are moving. In the street, they are moving, holding their gadgets. They don't even see the next person to them. They don't even talk to anyone in the buses, wherever they are. Wisdom is crying out. One writer says the greatest inheritance we can give our children is a little time each day. Maybe one hour, maybe 30 minutes, talking to them. Because there is lack of wisdom. Prayer was an important element in family life. The family took time to pray and to ask God's guidance in all things. Wisdom cries out to the families, to each other, and to pray for one another. One recent study said that approximately 99% or 90% of Christians never have family prayer by or Bible study. They are too busily preoccupied with other things to pray. They are too distracted with the world, too saturated with getting and spending. God is still God. God has not changed. He's still the same. God is still in charge of all things. A great tragedy today is not simply disobeying God, but living as though God does not exist. Because we have taken it too much on ourselves. Wisdom cries out for more families to have prayer and devotional time. Time for caring, time for sharing, and genuine listening and interaction. If more families did this, perhaps we wouldn't have the level of distraction, disintegration, disaffection we see among various youth and adults today. Wisdom cries out for prayer, caring and sharing, teaching and learning within the family circle. These things have been lost and they are no more. Wisdom is crying out for morals and ethics in the culture of this land, in a culture of commercialization and exploitation, in a society where sex and violence are glorified for profits. We don't grasp the wisdom for how much things adversely affect the values of our children. And, and you, you can see it even all the movies that you, people watch. Some are written GP, P, PG, meaning parental guidance. And you can even read violence, sex and nude or whatever in the movies. And our young people now are watching these things on a daily basis. Who is guiding them? Who is helping them? Wisdom is crying out. In our society where anything which increases profits is marketed, commercialized and exploited, wisdom cries out for the prophet, the truth teller, the warrior who will have the courage to tell it like it is, is crying out for the prophet. Not prophets, but prophets are needed today. We don't need prophets, we need prophets who can speak out without fear. People who will speak the truth and call the culture and society into account for the shameless culture of exploitation and the dissemination of anything that will sow, particularly when that is sold, destroys the capacity of our children to discern what is just, moral, and righteous. Our children don't know which is okay, which is just and moral. Anything is now permissible for them. Wisdom cries out for boldness and courage, for the discerning and daring and dared to stand before the powers and the principalities and expose the truth of the exploited and denigrating aspects of our culture. Must everything be sold? Are there no limits to what the larger culture can propagate for prof prof profit? What are we saying? Wisdom is crying out for caring in the schools of this land. Where teachers are beset with disciplinary problems with some students that they can't teach the other students. The problems of crime and violence in schools cause for much concern. Where are we getting this? Where is it coming from? Where is the wisdom of administrators and educators, parents and others in combating the problems of education? 
While some funding is helpful, more commitment on the part of parents and others is needed to provide children with education, which will allow them to compete in tomorrow's world. How does the tomorrow look like for our children? Parents then must view schools as more than drop-off places and teachers more than glorified babysitters. But where is the wisdom? Where is the relentless and tireless search for the answers to fix the problem? One teacher remarked that she is too, she's so fed up now that all she does is come to work and collect a paycheck and go home. No more worried about the, these children. They are tired of it. Who is to instill all these things? Who is to instill wisdom in our children? The problem is our educated elite, the teachers who teach and the administrators who lead, are at a loss to resolve the current crisis. Wisdom is crying out for solutions which will affect positive results. If the schools die, the people will perish. Wisdom is crying out for positive change and transformation in the schools throughout the land. Wisdom is crying out. Finally, wisdom is crying out for courage in the churches and religious institutions of the land. Regrettably, the church too often has remained nameless, silent or accomplice in the calamities of our society. The church has now been silenced. It follows what the government says. It follows what the government is doing in everything and anything. No one is able now to stand against the things which could be brought which are not good, even if it is being brought by the government. The church cannot shake its responsibility in rebuking and reproving the ills of the social order. Where is the church? Where is God? Where is the church in addressing the various troubles which plague us? Where is the church in eradicating poverty, oppression, and disaffection, and the depression in the land? The writers of Proverbs understood that a return to wisdom inherently meant a return to God. Because it says, if you don't seek wisdom, then you are a love of death. You are looking for death. So the church must return to wisdom of God if the larger society is to retrieve a sense of coercion and unity. The church should return to the wisdom of God. The problem is the exilic consciousness of the church, a consciousness which has insulated itself against the harsher realities of evil, a consciousness which has established its own comfort zones by isolating itself from its vital source and extent truth, from a God of the Exodus, a God of salvation, a God of liberation. That's the God we should worship. Let's come back to the Bible. Let's come back to the real Bible and listen to what the Bible is saying. I call the church to come back to the Bible. Wisdom cries out in the churches and religious institutions of the land for a return to Jesus, who is the savior of the world. The Bible has been taken out of the schools and to see what is happening. And we brought the guns and the knives in the schools. This is what we brought now. By taking out the Bible from the schools, we brought the knives and guns in the schools. A return to the biblical foundations and its teaching as its source of spiritual vitality will energize the church in its fight against evil and justice. Needed today is a theology of wisdom and truth. Rooted in the wisdom and truth of Christ, which embraces and transcends the ephemeral fluctuating truth of marketplace and imparts its own archive of value and meaning, unfettered by the constraints and exploits of our culture. Wisdom cries out throughout the land, are there no takers? No takers for the deeper insights, the studied and ponderous reflections which have quickened our resolve and tapered our steps. No takers for knowledge and precise which illuminate the light of our God on our darkened paths. Where is wisdom? Where are the seekers of wisdom in the streets, at the city gates, in our homes, in our culture, in our schools, and in our neighborhoods? Where are the seekers of love and light and truth in our society and in the church? Truth tellers, where are you? Torch bearers, where are you? Nowhere to be found. Flame showers, where are you? Seed growers, where are you? Men and women, children of God, where are you? Teachers, preachers, prophets, sages, 
cross bearers, where are you? Wisdom cries out, let us stop your crying by being more inquisitive, courageous, caring and committed. Let us stop for her crying by being prophetic rather than prophetic. We are only looking for prophets instead of listening to the word of God, looking for prophets rather than prophet. Let us pray and teach, reach more to those in need. Let us stand boldly and down for love, truth and justice through all the land. Let us seize the crying so she may find a place in her heart, in every home, in every mind and in every dome where the spirit of knowledge, truth and God exists. In conclusion, how long shall wisdom cry before we respond to a Christ? Come to Christ. Come to Christ. Wisdom is Christ. Christ represents the wisdom of God. If you read 1 Corinthians verse 1 and 17 to 31, it represents the wisdom of God. Amen to that. The wisdom is only found in Christ. If you don't have Christ, there's no wisdom. Knowledge without wisdom is useless. Intelligence without wisdom is useless. We need Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it's now high time we should seek God. It's high time the world seek God. Look what is happening around. Look what is happening everywhere. Even leaders without wisdom, you can see the destruction that is happening. I don't even need to point anywhere. You can see it. Just go, listen on the TV. You tell me where all these things are coming from. May the good Lord bless us as we think upon these words from Proverbs chapter 8. Seek wisdom and you live. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. At the beginning of creation, your spirit breathed upon the waters. You breathed life into being. Worked your wisdom to the warp and wave of the world. But we thought we know better than you, Father. We valued knowledge more than wisdom. We went on our own way. We did our own thing. We twisted the depths of life. We confessed before you our arrogance, ignorance, our pride, selfishness. We pray for your forgiveness in the name of your son Jesus. We pray that you may grant us the guidance of your wisdom as we seek to live our lives for you and the strength of your spirit as we seek to set right what has gone wrong in our lives and this world. Be our pattern and power, our savior and sustainer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is always good after hearing the word of God just to say thank you, Lord. As I take, as we take our offering at the end of hearing the word of God, it is always right to say thank you, Lord. There is wisdom in it, in thanking God, because you are saying all the things that I have come from you. So there is wisdom in our thanksgiving offering. Let us pray. God of wisdom, as we come before you, we bring our offerings to you. We bring our tithes to you. We say, without you, we can't do all these things. You are the provider of everything. The giver of wisdom. Father, help us to discern what is right, what is good, and the things that we should do. Father, bless this offering in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the giver of everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive the blessing. Let us receive the blessings. May the strength of our Almighty God support you. May the love of Jesus, the Son, surround you. And may the wisdom of the Spirit inspire you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.